Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. And uh, anything else? Is that clear? Oh, yes, I'll add the slides. So I just got it uh, recently. Also, uh, Dr. Priya is with us right now. So if you have any questions about what she had covered, you can ask her. Yeah, you can ask any doubt. Like uh it, even if they are very simple questions uh yeah just ask Also, like, uh, if any of you are planning to do the final product of sorts, now would be a good time to uh, may maybe form teams and interact and ask questions, maybe ask for ideas also. So feel free to unmute yourself and uh, talk about anything. It can be anything related to quantum computing also. Um, hi, Praveen. Uh, this is Tilak. So oh, yeah. yesterday, I mean, uh, I, I couldn't attend. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend the tutorial one. And okay. as I said, the student, I, I'm still uh, looking for the tutorial one recording, and it still says the same error. Actually, okay. I don't know if it's the issue on my side. So, okay. so, uh, so I, I don't have any doubts as such to ask. Uh, otherwise, I could have asked. <laughs> okay. The tutorial one was there. Yeah, that's that's the problem for me. Unfortunately. Okay. So uh, yeah, even for me, they're showing uh, processing. So uh, right now, uh, I think Google Drive is the best option I can uh, give. Uh, so after the workshop, we will upload uh, them onto YouTube as an unlisted video. And uh, so we'll share them afterwards. So I hope that is all right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So I can uh, share the slides in Slack, look. That'd be fine. Yeah, I've also uploaded slides in the same drive. Oh, okay. Okay. I also want to know if, if it is possible to conduct this uh, kind of open uh, open session after some days, maybe, maybe so that the interested people could chime in and still ask their doubts. Because honestly, these were the first time concepts for me. Okay. I had to write down the whole okay. uh, lecture one slides uh, yesterday night, and it, it made more sense then actually. So okay. I think as I, as I read read back and again and again, I think better doubts would come. Uh, okay. So if possible, if you guys have time, mm -hmm. all the researchers here, if, if a session could be conducted some days after uh, after this week, it could okay. be better, I guess. You know, more interested people could come in. Okay. Better doubts. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, that's a good suggestion. Uh, I'll try to arrange a session on uh, next Sunday if uh, that's all right with you. Oh, great, Pravin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll share the slides in the Slack channel as well. If you have any doubts, you can let me know.
Hello. Ah uh, yes, you are you are audible. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Ah, uh, so in the tutorial one session, ah, uh, by Dr. Priya, ah, uh, could you please repeat the uh, question with where ah uh, you measure with respect to one bit and you tensor it with the identity matrix and that part was a bit fast and it was not very clear. So. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, was the one qubit one uh, clear? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first, let's just look at the. Uh, is my screen visible? Oh yes. It is. Okay. So uh, we first just uh, look at these two expressions from the quantum mechanics postulate. So here, what we are doing is uh, the probability uh, of a particular outcome after measurement is given by this expression, and the state after measurement is given by this expression. So here, uh, what we'll be doing for the two qubit case is uh, these operators. Uh, uh, here, uh, here we'll just be replacing mm uh, mm dagger by tensored with i. And because we are not performing any operation on the second qubit, and uh, here mm will be replacing it by mm tensor with i, because again we are not doing anything on the second qubit. So now let's go to that particular slide. So uh, as I mentioned here, uh, we are doing projective measurements. Uh, so our uh, measurement operators m m1 and m minus one will be uh, ket bra of b1 and uh, uh, ket b b2 bra b2. So let's uh, now look at here. So here, uh, hence we have p of one equal to we are uh, we first have uh, psi psi and then we have uh, ket bra of b one tensor i because now this is the measurement operator which we are considering. On the second qubit, we are not performing any operation, so we just put in tensor with identity over there. Only on the first qubit, we are performing the projection operation. So we are uh, we are applying this projector over there. So similarly, even in the measurement state, uh, in the post measurement state, to obtain that, we are applying the uh, projector onto the first qubit, and we are tensoring it to the identity operator. So yes. So now let's uh, take the state under consideration. So the state was uh, b1 equals to plus state. This was one of the basis states. So we are going to develop a projector based on this. So the projector based on this would be plus uh, ket plus uh, bra plus tensored with identity because we are not doing anything on the second cube. And um, again, like from this expression, we'll be putting the psi. So we are taking the uh, Hermitian conjugate of the psi, and uh, that's yeah, that's where we are getting we are taking the Hermitian conjugate of this, and we get uh, bra zero zero plus bra one one by root two. And then we multiply it with this operator. So uh, maybe I should have a bracket here that might be a bit maybe that has led to some confusion. And uh, then we have the operator, and then we have uh, psi again, and then we compute it. So here uh, we get uh, uh, zero plus zero, and then uh, on for the second qubit it is zero identity zero, which is nothing but zero zero. So we get this uh, operator. So here, here we have zero plus plus zero, tensored with zero zero, and this is equal to one. And uh, the, these both of these are equal to one by root two. So we get half from here. And uh, then we uh, take the second part. So we take zero with one one. So it's zero plus plus one, and uh, uh, on the second qubit, we have zero identity one, so we get zero one here and zero plus plus one, and uh, yeah, similarly we can compute for the rest too. That is one plus plus zero, and we have one identity zero, so we get one plus plus zero, then sort with uh, one uh, identity zero, which is nothing but one zero, and uh, then we consider the last combination that is. Uh, 
one plus plus one and uh, tensor width one identity one, which is nothing but one plus plus one, tensor width uh, one one. And uh, here, uh, because zero zero is uh, the inner product of zero with zero is one, inner product of one with one is one, and inner product of zero with one and one with zero is zero. So these two terms uh, uh, like vanish, and we are just left with these two terms. So these are ones, and uh, each of these are uh, one by root two. So we'll get half over here and half over here. So half plus half by two is half again, and uh, that's how we get the probability. Similarly, for p of minus one, we'll get the probability to be half. Uh, for the post-measurement state, uh, so here we are again considering. Uh, here we're considering the measurement operator to be uh, this projection operator plus plus tensor with identity into uh, the state side and uh, root of the probability. So here we are applying this operator on the state side, and we are going to divide by the root of the probability. These two cancel out, so we're just left with this. So here uh, we have plus plus acting on uh, uh, zero zero plus plus tensor with identity first acting on zero zero. So here we get plus plus zero tensor with uh, uh, identity into zero, which is nothing but uh, plus plus zero tensor with a uh, zero. And uh, similarly, we get the second term that is plus plus one tensor with identity on one, which is plus plus one tensor with identity on one. So. Here, uh, yeah, so this these two inner products, again, we get it to be 1 by root 2. We are left with plus over here, tensor with 0, plus, plus, tensor with 1. So we can just take out the common factors, which is 1 by root 2, plus, tensor with uh, uh, 0 plus 1, which is uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we kind of combine these two, we get 0 plus 1 by root 2, which is plus, and hence we get plus plus. And similarly, for m equals to minus 1, we can work it out, and we get the post-measurement state to be minus minus. Um, is that uh, like is that clear, Rakshita, or uh, should I uh, should I even explain the other question? No, that's all right, Dr. Priya. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just to add uh, one comment. Uh, yeah. So the measurement over here, uh, the second expression basically normalizes the probability. Now normalizes the state. So the one bit uh, root of the probability is basically normalized. You can think of it like that. And uh, here we obtain two results for m equal to plus one or minus one because it's probabilistic measurement. This time, yeah, yeah, right. Right. So physically, when you measure a qubit, uh, uh, we were told that it will turn into a classical bit, right? Uh, uh, like by classical bit, what it was, uh, it was, it meant is that uh, it will go into the orthonormal basis states. Like for example, if you consider here, we're measuring with the plus minus basis, right? So you can see that the first qubit, it is either in the state plus or in the state minus. The superposition is lost. So I think that's what was meant by classical bit. Uh, it's not like the state becomes classical, but uh, like uh, uh, it gains classical properties, like the superposition is lost. Oh, okay. so for example, in QKD also, you saw that uh, uh, it was quantum communication, but the information transmitted was classical. Although you used either ket zero, ket one states or plus and minus states, uh, these are quantum states. But because you're just using the basis states and you're not using the superposition or the, uh, you know, which is uh, like very important for uh, quantum algorithms and quantum advantage, because of that, uh, these are viewed as classical states. Like physically, uh, we don't care about them like uh, when we just view it from the information theoretic perspective we are just we just get either zero or one or here it uh, maybe plus is mapped to zero and minus is mapped to one so we we just get it as in the bit form we don't get it in the qubit form because the superposition is not there so i think that's what was meant by classical states otherwise like uh, these are quantum states and if you again perform quantum operation on this then uh, you can get uh, like again, quantum superpositions. Right, right. Yeah. 
also one last question in the measurement uh, uh, chapter uh, so uh, when you are taking the measurement uh, state for a particular m you say you took it for an eigen value right yeah uh, so is it the same as the basis vector uh, eigen value for that particular basis vector or uh, is it in general just plus 1 minus 1 or something like that uh it's uh, usually like every measurement we associate it with something called as an observable uh so there are two things one is the measurement basis like when we are considering the projective measurements we have the measurement basis and then we have the observable so um like the me uh, observables eigen vectors are the measurement basis and their corresponding eigen values of the measurement basis is what we get as the result because what we can see on a measuring device is just a pointer right so that will either show the eigen value plus 1 or minus 1 so uh, that is viewed as the measurement outcome okay okay so uh, that's the, just last... to clarify here the observable is either x or z the gate yeah oh in this problem yeah Uh, so we'll observe uh, ket plus or ket minus. Is that it for x basis? Or uh, do we yeah. observe the uh, eigen values? Which one do uh, we observe? We'll be observing the eigen values. Okay. Uh, I know that sometimes we just say that uh, the measurement outcome is the plus state or the minus state, but uh, uh, physically, I think uh, we, we observe the eigen values. Uh, Praveen, do you want to add anything to that? Like, uh, no, no, I think uh, so. We observe the eigenvalues by uh, performing some measurements, but the final state will collapse to the eigenstates. Yeah, but like physically, do you know, like when performing experiments, like what do we see on uh, the device? We see the expectation values of the operators rather. Okay. So we uh, have a given quantum state. And uh, say we have an operator, say uh, x or something like that, and we take its expectation value, or uh, we try to observe it. And uh, by taking expectation, we get the probabilistic uh, value of the eigenvalue. So if it's plus and minus one, and each equal, yeah, both of them are with equal probability half, then we'll get the average expected value of the observable as zero rather than plus or minus one. So if we have a measurement uh, device, we will have uh, the final measurement as zero, which uh, will which uh, using which we can conclude that uh, each of them are present with the probability of uh, half. Okay. So this is going to uh, very details. Doesn't matter. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Akshita, for the question. Could you uh, say something about the project? I mean, what is the procedure? Are there any topics, team formation or something like that? Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, we have no restrictions on that. So it's just to encourage uh, independent, independent learning and uh, for you to uh, like learn about something by yourself and to try implementing it. Uh, so you can, uh, if you have any ideas or if you have picked up something from whatever has been thought so far or will be covered today, uh, that's great, and you can uh, proceed on that. You can always reach out to uh, myself, uh, Priya, Dr. Priya, and other uh, mentors at uh, on the Slack channel, and we can help you and we can guide you with maybe resources or what to proceed. Uh, and if you don't have any ideas, uh, we can always give you ideas. And if you see the notebooks, uh, which uh, the Indiq uh, community yesterday they shared the coding uh, notebooks. At the end of every notebook, there are some open problems. Uh, so those problems, you can approach them and you can try solving them. For example, yesterday when uh, Rana Pratap had uh, showed the Grover's algorithm demonstration, he had let he had, he had left some questions open in the end. Where when he solved the NP satisfiability problem, he uh, had an issue where, where uh, the probabilities were not uh, uh, like what what we expected. So the question was why was that, that the case? And he also had pointed out to some of the quantum challenges by IBM, uh, which were like uh, this year, early, early, earlier this year and last year. 
So uh, you can pick up even those problems and try solving them by yourself, and you can submit that as a project. So we really don't have any uh, restriction or uh, it doesn't carry any weightage for anything. So it's up to you, and that's just to encourage uh, independent learning, and uh, we'll always help you for uh, uh, like doing it. Okay, cool. Thank you, Pravin. Uh, I was thinking like maybe all the participants can in, like introduce themselves so that we get to know each other. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, small uh, group here, so it'll be nice to introduce each other. And if you want to form teams for the final project, also that was a good opportunity. Uh, to answer, uh, there's a question in the chat box uh, by Professor uh, Shumati. Uh, so, could we use uh, QKD concepts to uh, in performing image encryption? Uh, so, I think the very short answer is yes, because images can be represented as bit strings, and uh, because they're represented as bit strings, we can use QKD to uh, first transmit uh, secret keys, and then you can use those keys to uh, encrypt our images. So, indirectly, yes, you can use it. Uh, Dr. Priya, do you have any comments on that? Uh, no, and then I feel that we can use it to perform uh, image encryption. Uh, I'm not sure uh, there's a concept of quantum image. Uh, like, I've never heard of it. Uh, but I think, like, uh, we can just use the classical image itself and use the classical bits. And QKD basically, as I mentioned, like uh, the bits, uh, the information transferred is classical itself, but we're using a quantum channel and uh, it's a secure form of communication. Uh, like Professor Sumati, could you like uh, explain why are you thinking about quantum image? Like, um, ma'am, good morning, uh, Priya. Hello, ma'am. Uh, actually, uh, when I was, I work in security domain. So uh, when I was just surfing through the net and uh, I came across something like quantum image, but uh, I couldn't spend much time on that. However, uh, so I didn't get the exact difference between quantum image and in the, the normal image in the process. The, I mean, what is it there in the net is when you perform an image encryption using quantum concepts, you have to first convert the normal image into something called as a quantum image. So uh, that was what it was told. So uh, I did not know exactly how to do that. But however, uh, I did not spend enough quality time also towards that. That is also another reason. So I thought I could throw that question here and maybe I will get some clarity. That's all. OK, ma'am, interesting. I mean, I've never come across it, but yeah. Maybe no, I'll have a look and get that. Yeah, yeah. That, that should be good, yes. Uh, yeah. Because there is a concept called quantum image. That is what they tell. You convert the image into quantum image. Maybe they are talking about quantum domain, or I didn't get that properly. So I thought okay. this is the right place to ask that question. So hence, I thought it. That's it. Yeah, anyway, sure, yeah. Thank you for the yeah, question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the uh, information given. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, what uh, I am aware of in terms of quantum images when uh, I haven't heard, the, heard heard of this in terms of encryption or uh, those contexts. But okay. what I've heard of quantum image in terms of is the uh, quantum artwork which people have made. So mm -hmm. what they usually do is they uh, use some kind of uh, mapping mm -hmm. to map uh, my uh, the classical image mm -hmm. to a um, uh, to a uh, quantum state, and then you use unitary evolutions on the quantum state to create different artworks of sorts. So these uh, mappings to uh, quantum states are not trivial, and uh, so this is what this is the context I've heard of. Okay. So I'm not okay. sure what you've heard. Of. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for the information, and thank you for the wonderful workshop that you people have organized. Highly appreciable. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can you share the link uh, where you came across it so that? Like we can understand uh, from what context you're looking at the quantum image. No, generally, when we put it in the Google, that is how they talk about. I mean, uh, I don't specifically have any oh. links stored with me, but generally, when you surf it in the Google, that's, that is how they talk about the uh, quantum Im image encryption with respect using uh, incorporating the quantum concepts. 
so it was a general question actually okay. <laughs> if i come across any link i'll definitely mail you priya sure sure thank you okay thank you thank you thank you good day good day Uh, maybe all of you can just introduce yourself maybe you can start with professor sumati herself okay uh, that's good thank you so much and uh, this is sumati um, i work as an assistant professor in shastra dindu university tanjavur uh, tamil nadu and it's been uh, almost 8 years in shastra apart from that i have uh, two more years of academic experience and two more years of industrial experience and i put up in trichy tamil nadu and it's been wonderful to join this workshop um I, when i chose the domain security domain to work uh, i am pursuing my phd actually in security domain when i started to work with uh, when i start when i was about to give my zeroth presentation it was then i uh, came across this quantum concept and uh, it really made me uh, uh, you know feel like uh, learning about this quantum because so many things which are uh, not really believable which you cannot really think of that can happen uh, happens in quantum so um, so i mean the speed with which it uh, works um, um, and uh, many things like quantum tunneling which we do which we have been so far the learning has been like you know something this cannot happen but all those things happen in quantum technically uh, uh, scientifically yes they say that it happens so that is that is what drive me to move towards quantum and i think there is a lot more lot more things to explore in this area uh, this is what drew i mean this is what drew me to quantum actually thank you thank you nice one thank you uh, so are you working like on quantum security or uh yes uh, but then uh, understanding the concepts is a bit difficult uh, but i would like to implement some concept in quantum and maybe perform some encryption on uh, image or text or uh, uh, something of that sort but something i want to put some quantum concept into encryption thing and then get it done i'm trying to do that i don't know how far it will get through <laughs> let's see okay ma'am nice all the best thank you thank you so much yes ma'am thank you uh next uh, akshita do you want to introduce yourself yeah sure hi everyone i am uh, akshita and i'm pursuing my phd in the department of robot power center for cyber physical systems uh, my uh, phd topic is on micro robotics and quantum uh, basically that was the that was one of the topics which is quite famous right now and uh, i was exploring my options uh, to look at which domain in the industry would be suitable uh, you know once i finished my phd and uh, i thought this was a great opportunity to get introduced to quantum computing and quantum communication so i am completely new in this topic yeah as tilak mentioned we need a few days to process all that information so it's great that you guys are uh, you know going to keep in touch even after the workshop after a few days and yeah it's been a wonderful uh, time so far thank you thank you akshita so i mean if you have like very simple doubts you can ask us like uh, like we know it can it can be like Uh, difficult to understand certain notations and various things at this time. Yeah. So uh, next, uh, Miss Gayatri Devi, could you introduce yourself? Um, is a uh, hi Priya and hi everyone. I'm Gayatri mm-hmm. Devi and uh, I have a uh, uh, worked in Anna University as teaching fellow for uh, six years. Now I'm a homemaker for the past two years, and uh, I was very interested to do my research in. 
uh, in next year i am going to start uh, i have planned to start with quantum computer so i have started to learn about it uh, with the help of ibm quantum um, and also i am involving in uh, uh, many activities like challenges and summer school etc and uh, i wish to know what is mean by quantum informations and quantum communication so that i have uh, so that i am here uh, and i found that uh, this will be the great uh, a uh, great opportunity and uh, I, i i had some clear idea about it and also i need to know uh, how to how the beginners need to start with quantum communications uh, as a fresher or beginner uh, priya can you able to suggest some resources or uh, how to start with this uh, yeah okay uh, i'm not like an expert in quantum communication but Uh, i would say the first uh, book to go through is nielsen and shaw and uh, also there's john preskill's notes so these were the books which i referred to and i found them really helpful okay and uh, yeah there are some courses online like uh, you could go through those or uh, if you have any other doubts you could ask us okay uh, for quantum information i would also suggest uh, professor mark coyle's book okay uh, and then uh, yeah maybe certain very basic papers you could start reading there are a couple of tutorials on the archive so maybe i could share some links okay and uh, sure shita i'll do that sure sure thank you thank you so much priya thank and pravin thank you oh, and also uh, towards quantum information uh, i think it has a book by uh, professor hayashi Uh, which is a uh, pretty good if you want very theoretical concepts in uh, quantum information yes yes thank you pravin and kindly uh, give that author name in a slack too so that other people can also utilize it yes pravin yes oh uh, yes yes ma'am uh, uh, pravin and priya at this juncture uh, i would like to put on one more suggestion to you people because you people are doing an incredibly uh, good job um, if you could arrange for workshops probably here afterwards uh, specifically to some certain domain in, uh, which incorporates quantum concepts like it was a very general you touched upon all the aspects of uh, the all the domains probably uh, in this workshop but if you could take up some particular domain in which uh, uh, you know quantum is being applicable quantum is being applied uh, here afterwards in the future probably that would be much more helpful to uh, Uh, you know uh, people to get an idea clear cut picture about the applications of quantum too in case in the future i hope uh, uh, i was no, i'm not uh, um, you know giving some off uh, out of the box idea or something like that it was just my suggestion i thought this uh, no be... ma'am we understand yeah we are planning for it so i hope you got what i tried to tell you priya like um, it was it was all about the quantum it was a complete picture about the quantum that is fine but then here in case in case if if, if there is any possibility of arranging for a workshop specifically to some to some particular domain wherein you will have you can probably arrange n number of workshops here afterwards uh, because that is how the scope is so that would be much more uh, helpful to a large set of people actually okay ma'am sure yeah. thank like, you thank you mean more focused on certain areas of quantum exactly uh, exactly exactly like we have yeah. quantum machine learning quantum uh, information processing quantum encryption quantum cryptography post quantum cryptography uh, many such domains are available right so it is all open quantum networks exclusively so people who are doing specifically uh, working in some some specific uh, areas they would probably join a lot of people probably would join then so uh, Okay, ma'am. Sure. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. for the thank, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, next, maybe uh, Tilak. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, hello, all. To all to all the teachers, especially here, Happy Teachers Day. uh i think uh, the, the initiatives that you all guys have put forward to praveen to priya to all the teachers i think uh, th- thanks for uh, thanks for all your efforts uh, i wish i wish uh, to be in association uh, in the coming uh, years also uh, to have this experience of teaching uh, and learn uh, once again happy teachers day to all of you so uh, uh, telling about myself uh, so i uh, i graduated in 2018 uh, Uh, doing electronics and communications engineering 
in a college called Geetam University in Vizag. Uh, then I started working as an uh, electronics R&D engineer uh, for a cyber security startup in Pune called 42 Labs, uh, where I mostly uh, worked on uh, implementing the cryptographic platforms. So they had their own bilinear pairing based cryptography based platform, which they claim to be quantum proof. Uh, which is which could be quite debatable but uh, it is it is a kind of a closed source platform that they give to some parties and i implemented that on the embedded devices because the computing resources could be very low and it could be very challenging to implement and uh, and see them working uh, not only on desktop or or amd64 or a big level platform but also on the embedded devices that is where the arm architecture comes as most of you would be knowing so i primarily worked on embedded devices creating uh, uh, the cryptographic platform on mass storage devices on swam drones so so we have built some swam drones platform and some iot devices uh, so that we how, on on how we could realize this cryptographic platform on these devices and then i i slow, i basically uh, worked on a very brief period on qkd uh, realizing about how we can uh, use the qkd uh, into a business domain how we can use this bb84 and bb97 uh, uh, i think uh, and, and I explored this uh, uh, concept of uh, using how, using both classical and quantum at the same time. I think that is al already told yesterday by uh, by Mr. Raghu, Raghu Ranganathan, someone, I think. And, uh, and, and also uh, came across some startups in Bangalore, like Kunu Labs and all, which are already doing it. Uh, yeah, that is my basic exposure. And then I resigned to my company and I started working on some of the research ideas which I have on TinyML. Uh, that is running a machine learning model on microcontrollers uh, where i used to work on the microcontroller domain and then also i started working on lattice based encryption uh, to implement the lattice based that is the post quantum cryptography and iot devices i recently started working on it and i'm learning it and also uh, i was i'm also trying to implement a hash based authentication system on our amateur radio satellite the, uh, and then these amateur radio satellites are very uh, uh, restrained to regulations because you can't do any encryption on them, but still you have to make sure that they're very secure because there are a lot of attacks that happen on these amateur radio satellites. So that's where I'm working with a, with a uh, NGO kind of thing called Open Research Institute. Maybe uh, in the next month, I'll be presenting a small paper on, on my work on hash-based authentication for these satellites in an IEEE San Diego uh, symposium. Uh, so that is the basic uh, work I've been doing with, on the last three, four months uh, independently, uh, trying to research and implement the ideas. Uh, I'll be very willing to uh, join anyone in any projects that you will be doing. Uh, though I don't have any great exposure on the quantum level, I'm trying to learn. I'll be, I'll be catching up. Uh, so I'll be most willing to uh, join and learn in any of the projects that you might team up. Thank you. This is Tilak Amdan. Thank you, Tilak. Uh, yeah, next, uh, maybe Praveen Shahani, like, could you introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pradeen Shani. I'm a recent graduate. I'm a recent mathematics graduate from Amity University, and I'm exploring new fields and and quantum computing. Uh, quantum computing, quantum communication, uh, is is really uh, coming into picture, and and I just wanted to explore that. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pradeen. Uh, so next. Uh... Uh, uh, Shwetan Ayer, like if I'm yeah. pronouncing your name right here. Yeah. yeah, so hi everyone, this is uh, Shwetan Ayer, and I'm doing my bachelor's in engineering physics from the NIT University, Greater Noida. And uh, recently, quantum science and technology is the field that interests me a lot. And I would like to do my graduate studies in this field of quantum science and te technology. And uh, currently, I'm exploring the field, and later I would just like to do a research in the field of quantum. Yeah, so not much to say about me. Uh, and I'm completely new to the field, so I'm just exploring the field. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you, Sita. Uh, yeah, next, uh, Soumya, could you introduce yourself? Uh, Samia, uh, Samia, are you able to hear us? 
Oh, okay, maybe we'll, we can go to Soumya later on. Uh, Sukanya, can you introduce yourself? Good, good morning, everyone. I'm Sukanya Hoshal. I'm a final year undergraduate at the Department of Physics, IIT Delhi. And uh, my main uh, interest lies in theoretical quantum information. And before this, I have worked on an independent study with our professor at the Home Institute. It was based on error analysis, uh, security and error analysis of well-known protocols where I covered BB84 and E91 in detail. And right now I'm working with uh, uh, Professor Arun K. Patti on uh, Cuber analysis in uh, like indefinite causal order, superposition of indefinite causal orders of N completely depolarizing channels. And yeah, that's my exposure to quantum information as of now. And I wanted to learn more about uh, the quantum inf uh, communication stuff. So yeah, that's why I joined this workshop. Looking forward to learn. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sukhan. Uh, Soumya, are you here? OK, anyways, so thank you all for introducing yourselves. and. We are glad to have you all here. Uh, so yeah, maybe if you have, if you want to discuss about the projects or something, you could do that. And uh, you need not start with something very big or something which would lead to a research breakthrough. Like you could start with something which uh, is pretty common, so that you can just understand things first, and then you can keep on developing and improving on things. Uh, yes, yes, Priya, sure, sure thing, noted. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, because there is no topic to discuss, uh, yeah, I propose uh, discussing on this. Uh, at least if we see uh, all the Marvel movies that which are coming up, like they they use this quantum uh, concept of time traveling every time. Uh, I try to read on it, uh, but honestly, uh, could, couldn't spend much time um, uh, because uh, whenever I see a movie which uses these concepts, I try to read on it, and if I cannot understand, I, I'll stop watching that movie. Because to, for for that I, I'm unable to control that anxiety. Uh, so if, if if you guys any anyone have some thoughts on this time travel, uh, and the quantum mechanic properties, maybe maybe can we discuss on that if possible? Uh, so yeah, thank you for asking about this. But yeah, the, that's a, it's not completely uh, scientifically correct. At the same time, our scientific understanding of the universe is not complete. At the same time. So we can't say which is right or which is wrong. And with that said, uh, Marvel does use a bit of cinematic license where they kind of bend the current uh, theories of science. And right now what they try to use is the many world interpretation of quantum mechanics, where uh, we uh, say that there are many timelines uh, if you see the latest uh, movies. So that's the only uh, quantum mechanical features in the movie which I see. So they say that uh, for every uh, action, there are different possibilities and uh, many worlds emerge from each action. Uh, yeah, I agree. Most of the most of the things, uh, if you see even dark or these mm -hmm. things about talking about symmetry, uh, most mm -hmm. of the practical uh, uh, theories, they, they don't accept it. Uh, they're just some kind of uh, uh, propositions put forward uh, with no practical proof as such. Mm. But they very well, very uh, they work very well for the sci-fi and these kind of movies. Um, mm. Yeah, I agree in that. Yeah. So, uh, with respect to the Marvel's Endgame, I think uh, where Tony Stark mentions about some uh, calculations about time travel. So, while the calculations themselves are self-consistent and correct, I think you can find some online YouTube videos about explanations for that. They don't really 
translate anything to actual time travel or any uh, anything related to quantum mechanics uh, uh which uh, anything related to quantum mechanics which point towards time travel so they're just exercising a bit of cinematic license over there so uh dark is a good example which you pointed out and where they try to uh romanticize uh, entanglement and uh, that 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 that's actually a pretty accurate uh, way of uh, thinking towards entanglement but again uh, that we don't exactly understand how the universe works because we are a part of the universe and uh, so it's hard to comment on that uh probably uh, how did the entanglement come up in in dark like how how, how can we understand entanglement in dark i couldn't uh, get that could you explain a bit more on so uh i think in dark the main uh, premise of the series is there are two worlds uh, entangled but uh, should i not sure if i talk uh, i should talk about spoilers here but uh, later they showed the actually three rather and uh, they are intertwined and uh, you can go between the worlds and change things uh so in in a way they say that the two worlds or three worlds are entangled and they influence each other but again uh, they are not simultaneous presences so they're not uh, uh it's it's uh, also the uh, it's hard to say whether it's entanglement or superposition so that also is there okay okay it's, it's a bit unclear yeah i'm sorry yeah i mean th- there are many things like for example i was i was listening to the other uh, discussions on it on on a clubhouse room so they say that this parallel world concept uh, for example whenever we kind of experience the deja vu right we feel that something has been already done what you were expressing in prison they say that the deja vu is because it is because of the the parallel world uh, the same person's experience that which is transforming to you and that is why you are experiencing deja vu in this present world <laughs> that that is one thing i heard of it uh, at least a bit believable uh, so yeah. uh, about deja vu in specific there are a, f- a few uh, neuroscientific uh, uh, like uh, neurological way to explain deja vu where uh, the memory ordering is messed up so uh, so a memory is basically created in your me- uh, brain when you observe something and uh, the brain stores it with uh, respect to neurons but sometimes these neuron uh, th- your brain tends to make mistakes where uh, you feel that something uh, which we just observed right now might have happened in the past it might be mapped to a wrong time instance so in some errors by your brain can make you feel like you've seen this earlier so uh, it's uh, it could be a psychological effect also so uh, i mean it sounds like a good explanation a nice pop science ex- ex- uh, explanation of parallel worlds for deja vu but uh, this could also be the possible uh, case this is another this is a biological explanation that a lot of people give yes yes sure sure mm-hmm. agreed uh, that could be one of the thing um uh, yeah so i guess uh, if there's no other questions uh, we can uh, uh, conclude for now and uh, it's around 10 o'clock now so the next talk or uh, next lecture by professor peter rode will be at uh, 11 o'clock and he'll be talking about quantum networking quantum internet and uh, its uh, practical uh, theoretical and practical uh, applications and etc so we'll meet at 11 o'clock uh, and if you have anything uh, questions or any uh, like discussions to make you can always post on slack So it's a nice talking to you now and I'll see you at 11.